Alrighty, um, UFC 143, a little bit late on the recap because I've been moving into the new house um, today, and uh, probably going to be a two-week process there, so we'll see what I can do. Um, Alright, anyways, uh, Dan Stignan, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson knocking out Stignan, who tried to stand with Wonderboy, which apparently is a D1 wrestler, so that was... Um, stupid. Uh, for Wonder Boy, I would I would love to see him fight another uh, striker in the uh, welterweight division because I'm not tremendously interested in seeing him fight a, fight a wrestler because I I do you know there's that chance he'll just get suffocated. Um, and it would be nice to see a, a good striking battle between him and another another guy in the division. Uh, Michael Kuyper, Rafael Natal. Disappointed in Kuiper's inability to stop Natal's takedowns, because um, I thought that, that was a big reason why I picked him. You know, otherwise, though, he, he showed a, a pretty solid ground game, actually, um, considering he's down there with a black belt. Um, you know, the striking looked good, uh, the cardio looked bad, although that was expected, because I'm familiar with Michael Kuiper. You know, he does have some cardio issues, and that's definitely... That and his sprawl are, are two things he needs... To improve, Re really, really does. And another thing, another thing I was, I was disappointed in him is he, he let Natal continuously apply that that pressure style game plan, but by not really letting his hands go, by not really um, trying to force the issue on the feet, and uh, particularly when he was probably obviously lost in the judges' eyes because I think that you got to get the first round to Natal. The second round could have gone to Natal because of the takedown. I wouldn't have given it to him, but um, judges do love the late takedowns to steal rounds. And, uh, you know, you had to realize that there, there was a good chance heading into that third round. He was down 10, 20 to 18. Needed to do more. Tried to finish, dropped him, tried. But the cardio failed. So, like I said, work on the cardio, work on the sprawl. And, and this guy could, could be a legitimate prospect um, in, in the middleweight division. As for Natal, um, as long as we don't get another ugly fight with a guy like Paul Bradley, I'll be pretty pleased. Um, Natal is a guy who, who bugs me because he he has the he has the cardio issues, and I've, I've said this. I don't I don't understand why you would have cardio issues. I, I don't get it. There's one thing, one part of your skill set that you have control over. It's how good shape you're in, how good your boxing is compared to the other guy. You know what? You do, you have no control over that because certain people pick up boxing faster than others. There's there's natural progression, you know, good trainers, etc. But you know what? Strength and conditioning, I, I understand in a five-round fight, but for a 15-minute round, 15-minute fight, particularly for a guy who's not debuting, as not, Hoffa Natal is not, how do you gas out after five minutes? It's 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 unacceptable. It really is. And uh, you know, that's kind of all there is to it. For Natal, I, I don't care who he fights. I, I really don't. I'm just not interested in, in a guy who can't get his cardio on track. Uh, it's, it's, had he lost this fight, I would have been, you know, on the bandwagon to cut him, but he won, so you gotta keep him around. That's is what it is. Matt Riddle, Henry Martinez, split decision for uh, Riddle. Did not particularly agree with this decision. First round's obviously Martinez, third round's obviously Riddle. That's not worth really talking about. What is what I suppose we're talking about is that second round. And, uh, you know, it seems Riddle got it on the on the basis of his berserk performance at the end of the round. Now, I want to say, he did other things in that round. I mean, that was leading up to that. That, that was a better round than round one because Martinez was starting to gas. Riddle was starting to find his range a little bit more, starting to use his reach a little bit better. I still thought he lost the round, but it's a close round. So, you know, I'm... I'm not going to say it's a robbery or whatever. I'm going to say it's a decision I didn't agree with. Um, Henry Martinez uh, needs to go down to 155 because the size problem is is clearly there. Um, the cardio issue, that could be a little bit of adrenaline jump, a little bit of octagon jitters, a little bit of uh, this being a very short notice fight. So it's um, kind of unlike half on its, half on its hall. This is a an understandable cardio-related issue, and uh, that will hopefully improve. Because I've seen Henry Martinez fight before, and he, he seems to have good cardio, so... Uh, 
and also Riddle worked the body quite uh, quite extensively, which probably did not help with everything. As for who Riddle should fight next, I don't care. The man is he's an idiotic fighter. I mean, and the first round showed it, and even the second round, it's like you are a much larger, supposedly a wrestler. You know, you push him against the cage, take him down, wear him down. I mean, you know, he's and fans are gonna be like, "Oh, don't suggest that." You know what? I've always said, you know, win. Um, and, and he did get the win, but it was considering it's a short nose opponent, a much smaller opponent. This shouldn't have been a problem for Matt Riddle. Really, should not have been. Um, as a result, I don't. Again, I don't really care who he fights next. Matt Brown, Chris Cope. Matt Brown putting Chris Cope down, showing basically, you know, I'm a better striker than you, and that's all there is to it. Cope is, he, he's not UFC material. He had a decent run in the Ultimate Fighter. He does improve, leaps and bounds. But you know what? Let him sit outside the, the octagon for a bit. See if he can continue to improve himself, and then let him come back. Matt Brown not really particularly UFC material either, but I mean he's exciting and and, and he keeps winning and, and he does do he follows game plan which I, which I can respect. He makes the most of what he has, basically. Um, as for who he should fight next, he's kind of in a boat where it's you know you're just gonna keep putting him in there with fights where it's losing you get your walking papers, and as a result you know pick a welterweight he's kind of in that same boat, and Matt Brown could probably make that a fight. That's basically it. Alex Caceres, Edwin Figueroa did not agree that Figueroa won this fight, but a double point deduction for Caceres for sh for kicking him in the balls. And the other, the, but the really disappointing thing for Caceres is I've never seen a guy have the back so much and not really come anywhere near getting that rear naked choker or, or doing anything with it. Like I. I Realistically, on the scorecard, Casera should have won this fight. That being said, it's a loss for him in his own regarding of his skills because he could not finish the job in any way. And that, of course, is a problem long-term for him. He's, he's got to work on that. And, and the thing is, I, I thought he was reasonably good at that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, it's terrible. Uh, next, Red Wind Figueroa. I wouldn't mind seeing Figueroa fight. Hmm. Wild Watson actually came to mind as a, as a kind of interesting fight. Maybe you could do that. Um, or or E. Shaboyne or someone like someone who stand with him because you, you just don't really want to see Figueroa on the ground. He's just not very good. Uh, as for Caceres, um, you know, it's hard to say with him because, like I said, I mean, he, he should have finished this fight. He should have. He shouldn't have let it get to the scorecards. And I mean, I'm, I'm a guy who, I'm not one of these guys who says it's your fault for letting you get the scorecards that you lost, but this is one that really should not have got there. And uh, I mean, that is what it is. Um, then we had the final fight on the on the undercard. Dustin Poirier, Max Holloway, Poirier. Hey, get out of here, Max. Um you know, we'd like to see Max again. It is his first time, short notice replacement against a very good fighter. So give him another fight. But you know, this this is a hard thing to you know a hard reference for his performance level. Uh, Poye looked good, looked good. Um, you know, obviously this fight was originally it was supposed to be you know some combination of him, Eric Koch, and Ricardo Lamas, and either of those fights would be uh, solid fights to put it to. Uh, Poirier in there against Ed Herman, Clifford Starks. Uh, props to Clifford Starks for showing, you know, much better stand-up than what we got to see against Jacoby, at least. Um, but in the end, not having, you know, just getting beat. Uh, just in yeah, just in general, getting beaten in this fight by uh, Ed Herman. No, not quite ready for him, I guess. Is basically how it goes. Next for Herman. Hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing him try to avenge his loss to Jason McDonald. I, I would. I, I think that fight makes uh, some sense. Uh, in in the long run, 
Also, I always am in favor of watching Jason McDonald possibly lose. Uh, Henan Barrow versus Scott Jorgensen. Awesome display by Barrow. Um, yeah, I, I picked Jorgensen and I, I was damn wrong. Uh, you can tell that Barrow is, you know, he's really, he's really got the training going. Like the stand up looks great. His ability to stuff takedowns is there. Um, this, this is the guy to put there in there with Dominic Cruz. Not that you know, I would necessarily pick him against Cruz, but if there's a guy at 135 who's going to be able to bring it against Dominic Cruz, it's it's definitely uh, Henan Barral. Uh, Roy Nelson, oh wait, nope, nope. Koscheck versus Pierce. Ah, uh, really just kind of a crappy fight, but if you didn't expect it to be, I think that's probably your problem because it, th these two guys' skill sets matched up in a way that it, it was not going to be tremendously exciting. It, it really wasn't going to be. I, I like Mike Pierce. He, he keeps going. He, he tries with what he has, but what he has is, is not a tremendously exciting skill set. Cost check, um, also not a tremendously exciting skill set. Um, that's just kind of all there was to it. Um, People are calling it a robbery, and, and I can I can see where they're coming from. Either way, I mean, this fight did no good for Koscheck because you know he talked up the you know this fight would you know be very easy for him, and, and it clearly was not. So you know another kind of and the weird thing is Mike Pearson now had three losses in the UFC and I think all three of those losses have quite possibly done more for his career than any of his wins because it, it shows you know just just how close he is but not quite there basically uh, Roy Nelson Fabrizio Verdum Verdum working the fat boy um, beautiful knees stand up looked a lot better um, you know definitely definitely a guy who you know, he's lost to the champ, obviously, so it's not really a title pitcher, but, I mean, he's a de he's a guy who probably has the skills to be kind of there and put him in there with, you know, your Velasquez or your, your Shane Carwin, maybe, or someone of that ilk to, uh, you know, continue to advance him up the ladder, basically. Frank Mir and him would be great. Actually, there you go. Mir versus Verdun. Do that. Diaz Condit. People aren't happy with Condit. But the problem is with that is, and I'm a little disappointed that the fight wasn't, uh, you know, a tremendously exciting fight. It, it wasn't, it wasn't to me what I was thinking it would be. It, it wasn't to me, you know, I was expecting perhaps too much, and that's my own fault. But um, you know, Condit went out there and he applied the game plan that he had to apply to, and he won. And I gotta respect that. And you guys can, you know, call it. Call it whatever you want, but it is what it is. You know, he went out there and he won. Had he gone out there and fought in the you know manner that I think everyone wanted him to, he would have lost. And that's just all there is to it. This is how you beat a Diaz brother. You make it boring. You 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 fight your fight and don't let him get in your head. And that's why I've always had a problem with the Diaz because if he, if they don't get in your head, I do wonder whether they can really do anything against the loot level fighters. That's my theory. That's my point. Or or guys with suspect gas tanks, obviously that that, that works too. But um, you know, obviously Condit GSP is probably the next for Condit. Diaz might be retiring. So you know that's all for UFC 143. And uh, you know I hope you enjoyed what was you know a pretty enjoyable card. So later.